What's up guys, CP Modi here back with another video and we are here with our Dogfish SSD review. Continuing our storage view series and taking a look at some of the more weird drives you might actually find on the internet. Under the knife today we have the, well, Dogfish line of SSDs. Now unfortunately it's just Dogfish SSD, there's no specific model number that I can actually find on this guy. So in general we're just taking a look at what Dogfish has to offer. And these guys, just like a lot of other SSDs we've been checking out lately, come in at a low price point but a little bit of an unknown package. Now Dogfish themselves are rather unknown for many people here and that's mainly because Dogfish SSDs and Dogfish in general is a B2B business or business to business business. Essentially meaning that they sell their products to other businesses to go ahead and do whatever they want. So they don't necessarily deal directly with the public. That's generally why you don't see a whole bunch of them around. And also too, they're not so popular over here in the Western market. Thanks to the fact that, well, obviously the box has a fair bit of Chinese characters on there, which is nothing wrong with that. They're more prominent over in that Eastern and Asian type of market where you might be more familiar there. But for just $29 recommended retail price, are these guys actually worth picking up and running in your system? Well, today, we're gonna go ahead and find out. So first things first, let's go ahead and take a look at the design department of this guy, and we're going straight back to 2003 Town with a real unattractive sticker on this guy that has the world's most hilariously translated tagline on it. It seems they've just punched it into Google Translate and they've gotten this. It's hilarious and I absolutely love it. The rest of the sticker has some weird little zoomy zoom things on it and some other branding and stickers and stuff like that, which frankly uh, needs to be either pulled off or hidden behind a motherboard tray. Thankfully though, the body for whatever reason is fully metal. So if you do want a metal SSD, well, you've got one right here. But in terms of the actual looks and visuals department, it really isn't doing itself any favors by splattering a big sticker over the front of it. So really personally I'd be hiding this guy underneath a floor if your PC case has got a floor or behind the motherboard tray but really not putting this guy on display however it looks apart let's go ahead and jump into the actual specs of this drive now as this thing is sold for a business to business solution so one business will buy it and then do whatever they want with it you might be thinking that there's a really nice spec breakdown well, you'd be wrong. There's basically no information about this guy. Heck, even their own website has a missing dot point on there. So, facts and information about this drive is a little bit hit and miss. The only thing that really we actually know about this drive is for our 120 gig model right here, we should expect 500 megabytes per second reads by 400 megabytes per second on the writes with really not that much other information. So we'll have to put everything in this drive to the test. First things first, Let's go ahead and rip this guy open. Then cracking inside of it, we reveal, oh, hang on a second, we get some interesting stuff in here. So first and foremost, we do get ourselves a mini PCB, which is pretty much standard for SSDs these days. However, we do get ourselves a silicon motion controller, which is actually the same silicon motion controller found in our King Dan SSD, which we checked out right there. So if you're thinking about grabbing one of these guys, they're pretty much all the same under the hood in terms of the actual controller. Where things get really sketchy is the flash itself. Now the controller is back from 2016 and shares a lot of its DNA from more well-known SSDs, but but the flash is a complete other story. This is a classic sort of buy from the cheapest manufacturer you can, scratch out the actual details and then sell them as your own product. It is just sort of, well, we get what we get. Now, you may be wondering why on earth is it scratched out? And to be quite honest, I don't exactly know. There's no real reason as to why you need to scratch it out, but there are some theories that you can sort of apply to this. Now, companies like Dogfish don't actually make the actual flash chips inside of this guy. In fact, there's only a handful of manufacturers that actually make the flash modules that go into these drives. For example, if you pull apart another named brand SSD, there's a chance you might find someone else's flash inside of a drive. For example, Samsung, Micron, SanDisk, and Toshiba are some of your more mainstream companies that make flash and companies like Dogfish will buy flash modules from SanDisk, Toshiba, Samsung, Micron, any of those guys and put them in their own SSDs. This is something that's been going on for just about ever because the cost to set up a factory to make these flash chips would absolutely blow a company like Dogfish out of the water. So having another company to buy from is absolutely necessary. And when it comes to these companies, usually what they'll do, for example, Samsung, SanDisk, Micron, Toshiba, all those guys will take their best of the best grade flash chips, put them in their own drives and sell off the rest 
at low cost. And from what I can kind of gather here, what Dogfish has done is just gone around to all the different manufacturers and bought the cheapest flash chips that they can buy, put them on their drive and scratched out the information. So if you were to buy, say, three, four, five, 10, 20, 100, however many you were going to buy, and to open them all up, you would just find the same scratched out flash chips. You wouldn't find one with Samsung, you wouldn't find one with Toshiba, or you wouldn't find one with Micron. Now, Maybe there's a completely different reason behind doing this, but for me, from what I can understand, they're scratching this guy out so you don't exactly know what you're getting in there, that you're just getting a Dogfish SSD. Kind of a really big pain to someone who likes to actually open up tech and see what's inside of this guy. I really wanted to see what kind of flash was in here, seeing that we got literally no information about the actual SSD itself, so it would have been nice to open this guy up and Google the flash modules in there, but... Alas, we're not going to be able to do that. So with that, let's throw it back together and start to take a look at some of those numbers. And first and foremost, we took a look at Crystal Disk Mark and boom, taking a look at those numbers there, they're actually not too bad. When we compare our Crystal Disk Mark run from this guy to a couple other SSDs on the market, it's actually really respectable for what we do get here. Sure, we came a little bit short in terms of the reads compared to the numbers where we got uh, 496 by 432 versus the 500 by 400 claim, but I'm really impressed press that we got more reads than what the paper specification offered. So big thumbs up for me, especially from someone who likes reading and writing a lot. Well, it's definitely going to be awesome there. This was also too backed up by our Atto tests. And when we go ahead and take a look at our Crystal Disk info, we don't see really that much out of the normal. As I've actually seen a number of people who bought cheaper SSDs on Amazon or eBay or wherever, plug them in, open up Crystal Disk info to find that it's got like 2000 hours on the guy and it's like clearly a refurb and that's how they got it so cheap. Not in this case, this does look to be a brand new unit. And hey, it even supports trim, which is really nice to see. Not all budget SSDs will go ahead and support the trim command. Now, overall, on our CP Moda leaderboard for storage drives, this guy comes in seventh, just beating out the King Dan SSD, but losing out to some like the WD Blue SSD or Crucial MX500 SSD. And this document will be linked down in the description box, so in the future, you can actually find out where this guy stacks up. Say, in a year's time when we test out more drives, you can still find this guy actually how it all stands up. So check that link down in that description box and you'll be able to see what it is there. Now, all this nerd speak actually translate to some pretty decent real world performance. Loading time of games were just about fine as it is an SSD. So you're not seeing too much better performance versus, you know, an NVMe SSD versus this guy. You're getting roughly about the same. And also to the overall snappiness, the kind of reaction time from the system was really, really great. I installed Windows 10 on this guy, booted up, loaded some programs and it was really nice and responsive and also also too, for those wondering, no, it did not negatively affect our FPS, nor did it introduce any stuttering into the actual frames. Here are some test shots out of some video games that I was playing uh, during my test, didn't exactly benchmark them, but wanted to play a game anyway. Boom, as we can see here, definitely not too bad, no stuttering or lagging, anything like that. Sure, the video's not in 60 FPS, because this YouTube video's not in 60 FPS, but my point being, definitely not too bad on the gaming department. The only concern that I have with this particular drive is longevity and support. Now I touch on this every Every time I check out one of these more cheaper drives, the longevity and support is definitely the big question point. This guy claims a three year warranty, but who knows in two years and six months time, will they still validate our warranty or will they just say, oh well, it's dead, go buy another one for like $5 by the time this guy's getting old. So uh, the actual warranty on this kind of guy is a little bit concerning. I don't know how much of a warranty we're going to be seeing, if at all. Heck, even on the back of this guy, there's like some dodgy email address, so eh, kind of a little bit interesting there. So the actual warranty is going to be a question point and also to the longevity of the drive. As we did mention, they've scratched out the actual flash chip. So we can't exactly even jump on the internet to see what model of flash this guy is and how well regarded it is. We just don't know what's under the hood. However, the question still remains, would I recommend this drive? And the answer is yes, but also to no. It depends on who you are. So I'll definitely recommend it if you want something that's extremely cheap, that gets the job done and hey, it works out of the box, shows up at your door and isn't a total scam. If you're planning to build an extra little system that you wanna just chuck to the side, have a quick little SSD in there, maybe you've got a little non sort of actual important computer that you just want some SSD speed, boom, perfect for that. Or maybe you're building a mad SSD RAID setup where you've got RAID, so if a drive dies, it doesn't really matter. For example, if you pick up 10 of these guys, run them all in RAID, who cares if one or two die because you can just chuck another one in there for like $20 and boom, you're ready to go. 
bit of a hint of what videos are coming down the line. But because of the unknown lifespan and unknown about this SSD, if you are looking at buying one of these guys, maybe a 240 or 480 gigabyte drive, it is a little bit on the hard side to recommend for a single SSD for your system. If you don't have a whole ton of money trying to get into the SSD world, this may not necessarily be the world's best way to go because if it dies, you may just be left with a dead SSD and nothing you can actually do about it. I guess Amazon might help you out with the warranty swap, but honestly, we don't know anything about this drive and heck, we don't even know the terabytes written. Now, speaking of the terabytes written, I've actually got this guy in my server at the moment. The box is actually empty. It's over in my server at the moment doing a 24 7 read and write test so we can actually see how many terabytes written the flash can handle inside this drive before it goes ahead and flat out dies. So if you want to know how this guy actually stands up, maybe you're watching this in 6-12 months time and you want to know how it's actually faring at the moment, check the description box because if I have any major problems I'll leave them down there and when the drive dies I'll make a follow up video letting you guys know how it actually died. But again, if you're watching this in say years time and you haven't seen any updates in that description box or you haven't seen any update videos from me, basically make the assumption that it is still going fine over in my server doing its read and write test. But honestly, we'll just have to wait for that. So TLDR time and a bit of a conclusion for this video. The Dogfish SSD may seem a little bit sketchy at first, but when it actually shows up, it definitely gets the job done. It does feature a well-known silicon motion controller that actually shares a lot of its DNA with more popular mainstream SSDs. However, the flash inside this guy is a little bit on the sketchy side as we have no idea who the manufacturer it is. Performance wise, it did absolutely live up to what they claimed and it was even slightly better in terms of the write performance and a little bit less on the read performance but overall I was totally happy to see what we got for such a low price point. The visuals and actual aesthetics department are really trash and would be great just to be hidden behind a uh, motherboard tray or even under a cover of some sort and in terms of long term durability and reliability it is still definitely concerned that we don't necessarily know about as dogfish themselves don't even let you know what flash they're running and don't even tell you what the rated lifespan is of this particular drive. So should you buy one? Well, as I did mention in the video, yes, and also to no, it will come down to what you're doing and how much money you have and what kind of actual mission critical resources you're going to be putting on this SSD. If you're just going to be using this guy, say a media center PC or something that really doesn't matter, absolutely this thing would be an awesome budget system. But if you're looking at picking up one of these drives for a daily driver system, maybe you want to put one in your laptop or maybe you want to use it as your daily driver desktop PC, I would probably recommend against it just because they are still a little bit of an unknown and we're not exactly sure what's going on here. But I reckon these things are great to buy in bulk and do an awesome project. Maybe you want to buy 10 of these guys and put them together in RAID 0 for a 10 gigabyte per second RAID setup. Bit of a hint of what's coming soon. You could totally do that without blowing the bank. But guys, do let me know down in that comment sections what other cheap or weird SSD do you want me to check out in the future of this video series and also do let me know what you think of the Dogfish line. Have you heard of them before? Have you used one before? Do let me know down below. If you want to pick up one of these drives, I'll leave them linked in that description box along with all the other links that we did mention here today. Thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.